The Ad Show. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to share with you my banknote collection as you can see here uh, in this little cheap folder I got, a uh, paper money album there and I'm also going to just talk you talk a little bit about this book here, the banknote yearbook which is a really good aid for banknote collecting. So I'm very much a beginner with banknotes. Obviously, as you can see, this is the 8th edition. Uh, I did buy this some years ago uh, when I did kind of briefly look into banknote collecting, but I never actually took it up. I don't know what the reason was for not taking it up back all those years ago, um, but it possibly was a combination of maybe not having enough money to feel like I could get a uh, a good enough banknote collection together or, or the banknote collection I really wanted to get going together um, or possibly there was other things I was interested in most likely. And even now I've not really got the money to start a really good banknote collection or anything but I thought to myself when will be the right time and there really won't be a right time so I thought to myself let's get involved with this now uh, because it's something I have wanted to do for quite a while. So essentially banknote collecting or notafilly or notafilly as I've heard it being pronounced before as well uh, is essentially just a collection of banknotes. Now I've started off generally although there are a couple of banknotes in here that I got given a number of years back by uh, one of my mum's colleagues actually who knew I was interested in banknotes and at the time I was maybe about 17 something like that. And uh, he had just come back from a recent business trip and or he may have come back from a couple of recent business trips actually and uh, he gave me a few different notes which was really really nice of him. So um, yeah it's notafilly or notafilly as I said I've heard it pronounced that way before. Um, some people also call it or, or branch it in with numismatics uh, and I don't think it's necessarily incorrect to say that or to branch it in with that term there as well. But essentially let's first have a very very brief look at the banknote yearbook. Now as I say this is a little bit out of date, it's a 2013 version. They do updated versions of these for the new banknotes that have come out every three years uh, within obviously as you can see down here England, Ireland, Scotland and the Channel Islands. Oh and Island Man there as well. Um, so then obviously they can refresh the prices because every three years, well not every three years but obviously gradually over that period the prices will have increased so they need to um, do a revised edition and as I say those new banknotes have come out uh, in that three year period. So there is another one of these books going to come out this year, later on this year. The last one was 2017, then before that was 2013 so there's actually a four year gap there um, and then this year yeah 2020 so I am hoping to grab my hands on that. I don't know whether the pre-orders have come out yet or not, they might have done um, but yeah so what I'll do is I'll just take this off here for now very very quickly and I'll just give you a very very brief look at this book I'm not going to do a full book review or overview or anything like that I'm literally going to select one or two pages and we'll just give you an idea of the images and the prices in there uh, that are included but this is very very valuable guide for a banknote collector and also just doing a bit of research online uh, on a few websites Pam West is always a good one to go for um, and actually they have, a, uh, she actually has a book out as well, I think, well she has a few books out I think, I think, uh, in combination actually with, um, possibly she's done it with a few other people actually. Um, but yeah, so there are places online that you can obviously look at banknotes and, and actually get some valuable and decent information on them. So let me just remove this off the table and we'll have a quick look at this uh, banknote book here. So you can see we are on the book here. I apologise about the shadow over this side. It probably won't look as bad for you, but on my uh, viewfinder on my camera, um, it, yeah, it just doesn't look brilliant. So um, you can basically see here you get lovely photos in here of all the banknotes. Uh, probably better to, to show you that one actually because that one's more in the light. Um, but yeah, lovely photos of all the banknotes. It's they're in full colour. That's all the way through through all the different um, pages, all the different banks, and all the rest of it. You also get a nice introduction at the start, giving you a bit of a. I believe it. It gives you a bit of a history of uh, of banknotes and things like that. Um, and you can see on here. Uh, you get all the prefixes and stuff like that. It'll show you where there's special prefixes like column sort banknotes or replacement banknotes. Uh, and then it will show you the values there as well. Now these values aren't current. They're seven years out of date of course. Um, but you can see it'll give you very fine, extremely fine and uncirculated. Now if you're going to get your banknotes graded professionally by a service like PMG. 
um, they actually have a more kind of in-depth gradiented system for condition and it's a numbered system as well uh, and so I think it's anything maybe above 64-ish that's uh, gem uncirculated um, but obviously you can probably go a little bit below that and still be classed as uncirculated I'd, I'd have to look up the, the grading system on the websites again and, and for different grading services the, the numbering system might be pretty much the same but there might be also subtle differences um, so yeah I mean this book isn't necessarily um, incredibly in-depth in terms of the numbering gradiented system of let's say um, condition when you're actually getting them graded and actually obviously placed in um, an individual little sort of folder uh, in which is it then encases the banknote and tells you its grade as well uh, which I do actually want to get into collecting some graded paper money as well but that's a bit more expensive considering you do pay a little bit more money for the fact it has been graded officially um so yeah you can see on there basically you have a bit of information about obviously the date february 1984 and then it'll give you a bit of the information about the banknote and obviously it should give yeah gives you the uh, signature of the chief cashier at the time dhf somerset i believe was 1980 to 1988 i'm not i'm not 100 sure on that but i'm pretty sure that's about right uh, JB Page, I know, is 1970 to 1980. So, yeah, there's um, really good information in here. Obviously, you can you can see we've got the, the new series here. Well, not quite as new anymore. Um, but, yeah, we've got a new series there, Series E. New historical issue, May uh, 2002. And then, obviously, it gives you all the information about all the prefixes. So, you can look on your banknote. So, obviously, there is the prefix. It's the first two numbers. Uh, well, sorry, kind of the first four numbers, actually. Um, but, sorry, the first two letters and then two numbers there. Although sometimes it can be one letter and then two numbers or something. It can be in different arrangements. But that is the prefix. And then that number there is the serial number. And you can get special serials. For example, a low serial uh, is quite desired by a lot of collectors, including myself. I really want to get some low serials in the future. But they're very, or they can be very, very expensive. Um, especially if it's, let's say, a first run note. Um, but you can get loads of different special series. You can get ladder serials, which are where the serial number goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or whatever it may be. Uh, very interesting. I uh, believe you can also look for, like, birth date serials and stuff like that. Um, there's, there's loads of different uh, special serial numbers that add to the value um and and it yeah it just um they obviously are more desirable to collect for a lot of collectors i mean some collectors won't be bothered by them but for a lot of collectors they will be bothered by them including myself um i really do uh, want to get into that kind of collecting when i've got a little bit more money at least so that's just a very very quick look at this uh, banknote yearbook as I say, the next one should be out this year, so that'll be cool. Can't give you a date at the moment, I apologise, but it will be later on uh, in 2020. And as we are already, as we're calling this video, um, I think it's the 1st of July today or the 30th of June. Might be the first, yes, yeah, first of July today, actually. Um, so you know, we're we're not far off. We're not incredibly far off the end of the year as it is. So it's it's got to be coming out in the next few months. So that's pretty uh, interesting. So yeah, we'll close this up and we'll get the um, my actual collection on the desk here. So as you can see here, just a very run of the mill folder. I'm actually hoping to get. Uh, another one very soon, a little bit better quality one actually than this, but it's good for a little beginner's collection. Now, unfortunately, I haven't gone through yet and labelled uh, the different banknotes on, obviously, the plastic of uh, potentially what they are, um, maybe label them with the prefix and the serial number as well. Uh, and I probably wouldn't label them with the current value because, obviously, values are subject to change. But what I might do is label them with the price I actually paid. Now, there's a couple of banknotes in here that um, aren't so good in terms of condition. In fact, there's a fair few. The first three banknotes I actually um, just had on me, basically, about five six years ago and i ended up putting them away and when i came to pull this folder out uh, a few weeks ago i didn't realize i had actually put them in there so i've just kind of kept them in there so let's go through now and just have a look at what i've got so these are the first three that obviously i just pulled out of my wallet uh, a few years ago 
and just whack them in there and as I said I didn't even realise I had them um, so yeah they're just some of the uh, I think these are Chris Salmon yeah might be one oh no there's, I was thinking there was one Andrew Bailey but no there's a Victoria Cleland there so that'll be uh, sort of tw post 2014 these will be um, well probably what was it Oh no, I'm thinking of Andrew Bailey, 2004 to 2011. No, these will be 2011 to 2014 in that range. I'd have to look at the serial to give you a bit better of a... Sorry, the prefix to give you a bit better date on them. You can see they are circulated, very, very circulated. But I've just whacked them in there anyway. I've just kept them in there. Um, and then, obviously, you can see here we've got some JB Page. So, 1970, 1980, obviously, again, I could give you a bit more of a more specific date with um, the prefix and stuff. But I love this issue. I really, really like this. Um, I think this is the portrait issue. I think it's Series D. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's Series C. So, Series D. Um, lovely, lovely issues. Good condition. Um, in terms of circulated, uncirculated, it's we're probably about uncirculated. I think there was little... Well, to be honest, I might be going a little bit low there, but it possibly would creep into to uncirculated. But I did see on them somewhere there was just something that I didn't like the look of. So, yeah, and I'm not a professional grader. I'm just giving you a very generic opinion on this so don't really take this for, for being much um but yeah they are good condition anyway um and you can see uh, jb page there lovely little banknotes they're also consecutives so you can see this is also another desirable thing as, of collectors where you get the serial number as a, a consecutive which basically means this one is 66,125 66,126 so that's obviously desirable now it would be more desirable to get loads of the consecutive so if I had maybe 10 or 20 of these in all the pretty much the same condition which would be desirable to be uncirculated and um, yeah there was, you know there was, there was a number of them that would be that would be good now you see got some writing on so that affects the condition drastically in the negative there this is not in good condition this bank no i got it very very cheap so i thought bugger it i'll just whack it in there uh, and this is a dhf summer set so an 80s one uh, pictorial series again series d and it's just a, an old five pound note there uh, i do want to get a few more of the the old one pound notes actually i kind of have a I don't have a nostalgia because I didn't live in the 80s, but I just I, I just have an affinity towards them. I really do like them. And then you can see there the backs there. I really like the Isaac Newton on, on the back of that one there. I think it's Duke of Wellington on this one here. But as I say, the fact that this is circulated, it it lets it down a bit. I've got a, got an un, well close to uncirculated one here. Practic uh, is it there? Is there something on there? Might be. Oh no, I don't think so. I think that's okay. Well. It's, decent condition then um yeah so five pound note here dhf somerset pretty much same as that one um but better condition really like that note you can see it in a bit better of, of all its gl glory there rather than on the other one you see i've got a bank uh, an ulster bank limited i think that's how you pronounce it five pound and it's the george best note really like the look of that note so i was really really happy to get it now, this is the reason why I'm, uh, I don't know about these folders going forward with the three things in here. Especially these ones with the length of them. Because as you can see, that banknote is coming out of there. And I can't get, I don't want to put it in any further or anything like that. I was very careful when I put it in. I don't like that. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I really need to do something about that. I really don't like that. Um, it's obviously just the way these folders have been made. They've not been potentially made for a larger banknote. But yeah, so that's that one. I'll show you the back of that one in a sec. It's a beautiful banknote. Uh, and then we've got Bank of England £10. Now, you can see here, the astute among you will know that this is a replacement note, an M prefix, M08. So that values it quite, you know, a little bit higher, really. You can check in the book and everything at price on that. Um, I think in the book it maybe says it's around 65 quid in terms of um, the condition and also the uh, prefix the fact it's a replacement no all that sort of stuff but uh, that is obviously seven years out of date so it may be worth a bit more now i actually got this note for 40 pound so i was really really happy with the price on that um, and it is uh, pretty decent condition that one as well I'm, I'm really happy with that i love the intricacy of that note i love uh, just 
the artwork on it is beautiful. Um, it's a portrait series, Series C. Uh, JB Page again, so earlier, slightly early JB Page, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and yeah, we really like that. So that would be probably early 70s, something like that. And then you can see that lovely, colourful, beautiful uh, George Best note there, £5 note. And then you can see the backs of those. I really love the back of that £10 note there. Um, and then next we've got a GM Gill £5 there. Uh, again, lovely condition this one. Really, really nice condition. And I really love the coloration on that banknote. I love the colours of it. The, the kind of a turquoise -y, the teal -y, the green. Um, yeah, I just really like that. And then we've got um, a Scottish £1 note there. Just a very, very standard banknote. Very, very cheap to procure this banknote. But I did want one of these. In fact, I've got two of them. Have I got two of them? Maybe I have two of them. But yeah, £1 note there. Lovely. And then we've got a lovely sort of Lady Lavery uh, £1 note from the Central Bank of Ireland there. Uh, 1965. In beautiful condition, this one. I really, really love uh, this run of banknotes. I, I just love it. I just think it's a really lovely note. Um, and yeah, that one's really, really nice. It actually comes in a separate sleeve as well that I've, I've kept it in. I've not... I've not taken that out of that one. So, yeah, it'd be good to actually get the £5 note and then the other variants of, the other, well, the other de denominations, I should say, of uh, that note there as well. So that's really interesting. Uh, I really do enjoy that note. I'm going to flip you around and show you the backs of those. Lovely bank note to the back, that £5 note. Absolutely love it. There's Royal Bank of Scotland, £1, and then there's the back of that other one, which I like, but I'm not as taken on as uh, as uh, some of the other reverses of, of different banknotes. These are the banknotes that uh, one of my mum's colleagues actually, actually gave me. Um, I actually really like that Central Bank of Barbados one. I think it's lovely uh, and colourful. Uh, I really enjoy it, so I'm actually going to look into buying a few other Barbados banknotes with it, you know, in time. Um, and then it looks like this is a Chile one, Banco Central de Chile, 2000 Dinaro is it? Oh no, Pesos, Pesos, where's Dinaro then? I'm sure, I'm sure I looked at one that had Dinaros on. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, it's an okay bank, no, it's interesting, the purple colour and stuff, but I don't know, for me personally, it might, it might grow on me, but for me personally, that one doesn't really... Um, it's not really attractive for me, but I'm sure for other people it will be. Uh, and then we've just got another uh, Royal Bank of Scotland there, PLC, £1 note. So let me flip you over again. So you can see there, that the back of that bank note, I absolutely love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And then you can see that one there. It isn't in brilliant condition, that one. It's been folded. Obviously, um, the person who will have had these, they were, weren't going to be looking after them like crazy because they're probably not a banknote collector or anything. Um, but it was still very nice that they uh, kept them for me and, and had me in mind. So, um, yeah, £1 note there, again, on the back of Royal Bank of Scotland. Then we've got a Series C, uh, is it picture? Not pictorial. Oh, maybe it is pictorial. No, it's not pictorial. Portrait. There we go. Portrait issue. Uh, Bank of England note. Um, and this is an LK O'Brien one. So that would be in the 60s. So, yeah, really like that note there. Lovely. You know, it's, I mean, it's fairly standard, but I, I like those notes. And then I've got another two, pound five, two five pound notes there. GM Gill. Um, and I uh, don't think there's anything special on my prefix or anything there. Um, but yeah, lovely little notes. Again, pictorial series, series D. Um, yeah, like those. But again, you know, they're nothing incredibly, incredibly special or anything like that. But they are in nice condition. Again, there's the, the back. I mean, people will probably think I have a real penchant for, for £5 notes, but I actually don't. Uh, it's just that actually, uh, I don't know, I've kind of just bought... So, some of these came in job lots on eBay, you see. And, obviously, I got them for okay price. And so I thought, well, they'll include them in the job lot. Like, obviously, I've got to buy them. So, let me just whack them in the collection. Now, what I could do is sell them on. And then it means that, let's say, if it was a banknote I wanted in the collection, I'd get that one for cheaper. But I'm just happy just to, to keep keep yeah keep them, really. Um, and then you can see we've got a couple of £10 notes here. Uh, again, GM Gill. Um, and yeah, these are again the pictorial series, I believe. So yeah, nice little uh, ten pound notes. So these ten pound notes don't take me as much as the earlier uh, series C ones, but I still like them. They're still okay. And then a banknote I have wanted for so long, 
Uh, Bank of Scotland, one pound note from the 70s, I believe, does it say on it? Yeah, so the Scottish notes, well, some Scottish and some Irish notes, uh, if not quite a lot of them, actually, um, have the dates wrote on them. Now, that's not the same for the English ones. That's why you need to learn the chief cashiers and when they were in. You need to learn uh, the prefixes and stuff to be able to date them properly. But with the other notes, the Scottish, Irish, that sort of stuff, uh, you can date them pretty easily because it just says on it, which is so cool. Um, so yeah, I really like the coloration on that bank. No, I just love it. I just think it's so awesome being that kind of rainbow colour. And then very, very quickly, let me just show you there on there. Now, I don't know who that is. Oh, it's Florence Nightingale, it says there. I'm just going to have a look there just so that I knew. Um, but yeah, I still, I love that bank. No, lovely little... Uh, back on it you know I, I like the back more than the front as i said the, the front doesn't take me too much but to be honest I, I do like the back so i have to give it that and then there's the back of the one pound scottish note there interesting um i quite like that shield actually that shield looks uh, quite interesting and stuff um i love how there's a lot of history on the bank notes and and also even like some uh, mythological symbols sometimes and things like that and I do really enjoy that. So, that is my banknote collection. I'm going to be careful shutting it there. Just so that then I don't um, kind of mess up any of the banknotes. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'll leave it there for this one. I think that was fairly comprehensive, at least in, in one regard. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. If you did like it, click the like button. Obviously, su subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I will see you very soon. So see you very soon, guys.